This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. This time around, we're looking at ritual effects. These types of effects get their name from Dark Ritual, an instant that has been around since the game began. It was first printed in Alpha, and it lets you pay one black mana for three black mana. Following the model of Dark Ritual, a ritual effect is a card that has you spend some amount of mana to get back even more at the cost of using up the card. This type of effect appears most often in black and red. There is a downside, of course, with these ritual effects, and that is that you give up a card for a one-turn mana boost. So if you don't make the most of your mana production, you do end up really behind your opponent when it comes to cards. However, decks over the years have found ways to make use of these mana boosts that ritual effects give them, and overall, rituals have a pretty great track record in Magic. Letting you cast higher mana spells sooner than your opponent is great. When defining ritual for this video, I included any non-land card that used itself up for a one-turn mana boost. In this video, we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive Magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A top 8 at a Pro Tour, Players Tour, Mythic Championship, Mythic Invitational, Legacy, or Vintage Championship is worth 2 points, and a top 8 at a Grand Prix or Magic Fest is worth 1 point. At number 10, we have Eren Crag Feet, which is the newest card to make this list by a lot. Eren Crag Feet lets you pay 4 mana to get 7. Unlike other rituals, it also only lets you cast one more spell that turn, so you better do something awesome with that mana to offset the downside of using up a card. Eren Crag Feet is played in historic goblin decks, where it allows you to power out Muxus Goblin Grandee very early, as early as turn 3 with the help of Skirk Prospector and cost reduction effects. Normally, if you're using a ritual effect to play just a creature, you're effectively 2 for one yourself, but because of Muxus's Enter the Battlefield trigger, you're always going to make up for that, since he tends to put several goblins into play right away. And goblin decks run 8 goblins that give all goblins haste, so there's a good chance everyone will be attacking right away too, frequently winning you the game on the spot. Goblins are still a thing in Historic, but they haven't been quite as big of a factor lately as they used to be. It will be interesting to see if Eren Crag Feet can hold onto its spot on this list in the future. At number 9, it is Channel, which like Dark Ritual, showed up in Alpha. Channel is a ritual effect capable of netting you the most mana, since you can pay only 2 green mana and then get as much mana as you want. The downside there is that you can only get colorless mana out of it, and you have to pay a life for every single mana you produce. Channel is famous for being part of one of Magic's very first competitive two-card combos, Channel and Fireball. If you combine those two cards together, along with a way to make some red mana, you could get a first turn kill where you use Channel and Fireball to do 20 damage to the opponent right away. This combo was powerful enough that before competitive Magic began in 1994, Wizards decided to restrict Channel, since they didn't want tournaments to just be about whoever got both Channel and Fireball in their opening hand. Still, there was really no reason not to play the Singleton Channel in Magic's early days, as it could power you to a free win if you did get it along with Fireball. Channel ended up being banned in various formats because of the combo potential, including Legacy, Extended, and Vintage. It was ultimately unrestricted in Vintage in 2000, but by that point, trying to combo off with Channel Fireball was not nearly as good, and as a result, Channel hasn't gained any points since 1995. At number 8, it is Pyretic Ritual, which is pretty simple. You pay 1 generic and a red to get back 3 red mana. That kind of mana boost isn't incredible, and there wasn't really any reason to make it worth doing in Standard. However, in Modern, it has been great for blue-red Storm decks. We're going to be mentioning Storm a lot in this video, because Storm decks are very into ritual effects, as they allow the deck to ramp up their mana while also increasing their Storm count. If you combine this with card draw effects, it allows Storm decks to kill the opponent with Grape Shot and a whole bunch of copies of it. Storm decks tend to run cost reduction effects like Baral and Goblin Electromancer 2, making rituals like Pyretic Ritual even more potent. Pyretic Ritual has also gained a single point in Legacy, where it was played in a Goblin Charbelcher deck. These decks tend to run only a single land, so that when they activate the Charbelcher, they win the game on the spot, and in order to play only a single land, the deck needs to run a lot of ways to make mana that aren't lands, since they do still need to make mana to cast and activate the artifact. Ritual effects go a long way towards making sure this is possible. At number 7, it is Desperate Ritual, which is pretty close to Pyretic Ritual. The only difference between the two is that Desperate Ritual is an arcane spell, and it can be spliced onto other arcane spells. 
That actually comes up some, because if you have multiple copies of Desperate Ritual, you can splice one onto another, which allows you to net even more mana. Like the majority of Ritual effects, there really wasn't a great reason to play this in either block or standard. However, it has gained points in Storm decks and Extended and Modern. It's also gained some points in Modern Reanimator decks, especially those decks that utilize fellow arcane spell Goryeo's Vengeance. They can both be spliced onto other arcane spells, so they have some nice synergy together. It also has a single legacy point from a Goblin Charbelcher deck, just like Pyretic Ritual did. At number 6, it is Rite of Flame. This ritual starts out as costing a single red mana to give you 2 mana, but it gets progressively stronger the more copies of Rite of Flame are available in each graveyard. Note, by the way, that this counts your opponent's graveyard too, and while that won't always come up, it could happen in a mirror match. Unlike most of the ritual effects on this list, Rite of Flame was actually played in Standard, in particular in Dragonstorm decks. As always, ritual effects and cards with Storm are best friends, and this is even truer for Dragonstorm since the spell costs so much mana. It isn't hard to get the Storm count to 4 or so and then search up 5 dragons that win you the game on the spot. It's also gained points in Storm decks in Extended, Modern, and Legacy. It was banned in Modern in 2011, not long after the format was created because Storm decks were a little bit too good. It remains banned in Modern today, and it hasn't gained any points since 2017. At number 5, it is Seething Song. This ritual gives you 5 mana for the price of 2 generic and a red. It was played in big red decks in both block and standard, where its main purpose was powering out Furnace Dragon, a card that decimated many of the artifact-heavy decks in both formats. In Extended, it was of course played in Storm decks, but it also gained some points in Enduring Ideal decks, where the mana boost from Seething Song could allow you to cast the eponymous epic spell much earlier. It also found success in Modern Storm decks so much that it actually got banned out of the format in January of 2013, and it remains banned in Modern today. In Legacy, it's gained points in Sneak Attack decks where it can help you get Sneak Attack out quickly, and it can also serve as something of a plan B, helping you cast your Inferno Titan if you can't put it into play with Sneak Attack. Like most cards on this list, it has also been played in Belcher and Storm decks in Legacy. Despite having significant multi-format success, Seething Song doesn't have any points since 2015, and doesn't tend to be featured in current versions of Legacy Storm. At number 4, it is Cabal Ritual. It starts out as a worse dark ritual, but once you have Threshold, it gives you 5 mana for the cost of 2. It didn't see any play in Block or Standard, but Cabal Ritual is of course great in Storm decks. It's been played in Storm decks in Extended, Legacy, and Vintage, and that's going to continue to be the case. At number 3, I have both the Spirit Guides, the Simeon one and the Elvish one. While these aren't spells, they are functionally quite similar to Ritual Effects in that you go down a card to get a mana advantage for a single turn. With both, you can exile them from your hand for that mana, so you pay 0 mana to get 1. That can accelerate your game plan by a whole turn, and that's pretty great. And unlike most Ritual Effects, if you really need a creature, well, these can do that too. Not that that happens very often. Simeon Spirit Guide is a legitimate number 2, and Elvish Spirit Guide would have been at number 8 if it had its own spot. Elvish Spirit Guide is the older card, with Simeon Spirit Guide being a color-shifted card from Planar Chaos. In other words, it was intentionally designed as a red version of Elvish Spirit Guide. One of the downsides with these two is that exiling them is not a spell, so they don't add to your storm count. This means they aren't nearly as good in storm decks as all of the other rituals on this list. However, over the years, a whole lot of decks have been interested in these cards across multiple formats, especially combo decks where they help you go off a full turn earlier, and that's a pretty big deal. They're also nice in prison decks that are intent on getting their cards in play to lock down the opponent as soon as possible, since prison decks need to get that kind of card down quickly. They also work well in landless decks like Belcher, since unlike most rituals, they don't cost any mana to use. Both have seen significant play in the last year or so, and are likely to continue to gain points. At number 2, I have Dark Ritual, a ritual that started it all. This one mana spell gives you 3 mana, allowing you to play some pretty powerful stuff on turn 1. In the early days, the scary turn 1 play was Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. If your opponent couldn't do something about that, they often lost the game because the Spectre would rip apart their hand and make it hard for them to defend themselves. Later on, it became all about Dark Ritual and Necropotence. Basically, for the first several years of the game's history, it was mostly just used to power out things early, which is pretty powerful, but then, in 2003, the Storm mechanic made its debut and Dark Ritual found a new purpose, helping Storm decks get stupid high Storm counts so they could win the game with a lethal Tendrils of Agony or some other Storm spell. It's going to continue to gain points. And at number 1, I've included 3 cards, and all of them are 0 mana artifacts that sacrifice themselves to produce mana, Black Lotus, Lotus Petal, and Lion's Eye Diamond. Black Lotus is a legitimate number 1, Lion's Eye Diamond would have been number 3, and Lotus Petal would have been number 5. I don't think most people refer to these as ritual effects, and because of that I considered not including them. 
But as I thought more about it, they are very similar in functionality to the other ritual effects we've covered here. Sure, their permanence had entered the battlefield, but because they sacrificed themselves for mana, netting you mana at the cost of a card, I ultimately decided to include them on the list. Like most rituals, these all help rapidly accelerate your mana. For storm decks, these are great because they cost zero and add to your storm count, which is incredible. Black Lotus is arguably the most powerful card in the entire game of Magic, and for that reason it's only legal in Vintage as a singleton copy, but it appears in pretty much every deck in the format, and anytime there's a Vintage event, it's a virtual lock to gain around 32 points. Obviously, this has propelled it to an absolutely massive score. Lion's Eye Diamond is a little trickier to use than the other two, since you need to have a way to get value out of your graveyard, but that's accomplished easily enough that it still sees a ton of play in the Eternal formats. The same is true of Lotus Petal, which may not produce as much mana as the other two, but it still sees significant eternal play. These are all going to continue to add to their scores going forward. Well, those are the ritual effects that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. If you want to own any of these cards, you can find direct links for each of them in Card Kingdom store if you look in the description. If you want to make sure you catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on old MTG Top 10s, you should see some playlists on the screen shortly. And if you're interested in hearing me talk about something that isn't magic, I do have another YouTube channel called Nitsahone History, where I talk about history. Thanks for watching.